actually check out now. Will Auburn make the playoffs this year? Uh, I don't know. I don't know about that. Um, I've I've predicted Auburn with ten wins. I actually had a um, a weird dream last night that the team wasn't very good. I have weird dreams sometimes. Sometimes about work. Like I think I went to Syria in a dream last night. It was very strange. Anyway, um, no, they uh, they didn't have a very good year. And I guess maybe that was because I I was uh, I wrote something yesterday uh, based off of, of a computer BCF. Uh, it's a very well regarded computer system. ESPN uses it from time to time. And if you look at the percentages, they have Auburn has a better percentage rate of losing eight games and then going undefeated, whatever the heck that means. But uh, whatever you want in that, whatever that thing means, take it for what it's worth. Um, but I, I've predicted 10 wins uh, back in, goodness, April or May. And then I, I was on the Fine Bomb show. Uh, at SEC Media Days a couple weeks ago, and I uh, predicted 10 wins once again. And the key, obviously, is going to be that early season game at Clemson, um, but also LSU. I think if they beat LSU on the road for the first time since 1999, this team is going to win 10 games, has a very good shot. Um, so uh, I, I just like the talent Auburn's got. It's most starters have had back since 2006. Seven returning stars on defense is huge. And, of course, the addition of Jarrett Stidham at quarterback is really going to help them out, um, you would think, uh, going forward. Uh, Daniel says, well, all, or excuse me, I already answered your question, Daniel. See, I'm, I'm still trying to get used to this. Um, Clint says, Auburn versus Clemson, who wins? As of right now, I'll say Auburn. Just because I, uh, Auburn might have the advantage there just because of quarterback play. Quarterback play is always going to be a big difference in some tight games. I think that'll be a tight game because Auburn's defense will be very good. But I also think uh, that Clemson's still going to be figuring things out on offense. I think Clemson's defense is going to be very good, but I think Auburn's quarterback play will get them over the hump. And I think Auburn will be able to pull off that upset on the road early in the season. Auburn will be probably about a touchdown underdog in that game, uh, in my opinion. So we'll see, but that, that's how I see it uh, coming coming down. Um, let's see. Lee asks, is Jared still the real deal? Um, we'll see, but everything I keep hearing from people is that he's the real deal. He's the guy, he's going to be the starter and only that, but he has the potential to be an all sec type of quarterback, uh, going into, uh, you know, late in the season. Uh, will that happen? We'll see. But listen, this guy is better than Sean white. He throws a much more accurate deep ball. Uh, and that's what Auburn needs in this offense really, really badly. Um, and he provides that. We saw it in the spring. We saw it in the spring game. And I believe that Auburn is going to be able to utilize that, similar to what they did in 2013 or 14. Listen, Nick Marshall wasn't the best passer, but he was able to stretch the field and throw it deep. He wasn't accurate at all times, but at the very least, he gave them that advantage where teams thought they could throw the ball deep, and they did, and it opened up the run game a little bit for them. Plus, I mean, it helped that Nick was – a dual threat quarterback. Jared Sims really not that. He can throw the ball and he can run it, but I just don't know uh, if he can do what Nick Marshall did, of course. Um, but we'll, we'll see. Uh, we'll see. Um, someone asked there earlier, uh, when, sh when will uh, Gus Malzahn name a starter quarterback? I think they'll have a great idea after the first scrimmage. I just don't know if they'll actually name a quarterback after the first scrimmage. Having said that, I think that I, I would say, all right, so practice starts July 31st. They'll probably go six, seven practices, as I said, then have a scrimmage. I'm going to say over-unders like August 14th, something like that. That's what I'll say. But I think after that first scrimmage, you'll pretty much know. That's my that's my opinion. I think after that first scrimmage, you'll know. I think they'll probably end up waiting till two scrimmages uh, to name Jared Stidham the starter. They want to give Sean White a fair opportunity, and they should. Jared, I mean, Sean White's been through a lot, and he wasn't healthy in the spring. <clears throat> Colby Morris asked, "Do you think? Do I think Byron Cowart will finally step up?" Um, hmm. How do I say this nicely? Uh, no. I don't see it happening, and I know that's, that sucks to, to hear that. 
But uh, I just don't see it. I just don't see it. Um, one sec. I'm going to tweet out this link to people if they want to join us. Um, I wish I could type. I type too fast and sometimes I mess up. And of course I messed that up. Facebook.com slash Brandon dot Marcello. Okay. And I am I'm back. Okay. Uh, but I don't see Byron Cowart stepping up. I don't see him having a big year. Um, in fact, he's at best right now the fourth best defensive tackle in the rotation. Yeah, that gives you an idea where he's at. Um, who stands out tight end position this year? I think it'll be Jalen Harris. Sal Canell will get more involved, but he'll be more in the slot. Uh, that's where I see see him standing up. Um, yeah, I agree with you, Kevin. Sean White deserves an opportunity there. He definitely does. They got to give him a shot. But like I said, I think after the first scrimmage, they'll have a pretty good idea of where where to go. And I think it'll be Jared Stidham. But they'll probably want a second scrimmage just to make sure. Uh, chances of Gus really handing over the keys to the offense to Chips? Asked Marcus. I think it's very good. Um, I think it's going to happen. Uh, they've promised it. He's promised it. Uh, Chip Lindsey says he's happy with the way things were going in the spring. Uh, the, the question really, though, is like when it gets to crunch time, for example, hypothetical. Let's say Auburn is down three at Clemson with the ball with about two minutes left, and it hasn't been a really highly uh, potent offensive attack. Does Gus Malzahn allow – Chip Lindsay to call all of his plays, or is Gus getting more involved and maybe even calling the plays down there in the final minutes? We'll see. We haven't seen that situation yet. Um, we saw Gus Malzahn get much more involved as the season progressed last season after he handled handed the reins to Rhett Lashley, and that's partly why Rhett Lashley went off to do his own thing. So we'll see. We won't know until it actually happens. Eric's like, how do we miss out on Cowart? You know, listen, I think a lot of people did. You know, recruiting services have number one uh, recruit in the entire nation. He obviously wasn't that. He really wasn't. So a lot of people missed out on him. Uh, the Carlson brothers are going to handle both punting and kicking this year, asked Marcus. I don't know. Andrews Carlson, the little brother, Daniel, the Lou Groza Award uh, finalist, um, I think he just got on campus not that long ago, and they'll see when they get into practices. But Auburn's really hurting at the punting position, apparently, at punter. Ian Shannon has not quite stepped up yet, and they want him too badly. What kind of vibe are the players giving off? I get this question a lot, Clint. I mean, listen, every player at every school practically is giving off a great vibe. They feel like they can do anything in the world. They feel like they can contend for a championship. Same thing with this Auburn team. Um, I think if you going forward – uh, I want to see how this team's reacting, <clears throat> you know, after week two, after they face Clemson. you got to really get into the season. But the way it stands now, they should be confident. They've got they've got the pieces. They've got a lot of returning starters, and they feel like they have the quarterback. As as Trey Matthews told me at media days, so what's the missing piece, Ben? He says two years, for two years it's been the quarterback, and now they have the quarterback. And obviously that quarterback, they believe, is Jared Stidham. So that's the vibe. They feel like they have the quarterback they need to, to be successful and consistent at the position. Question is, can they stay healthy? I mean, that, that, that's the big question for every team throughout every, for every season. Can a team stay healthy? Uh, Kevin says, hey, Cam Petway will lead the SEC in rushing per game if he stays healthy, possibly both him and Kerryon Johnson. Um, in the, in the, in it, I don't know. Uh, you know, Someone was asking me if both of them could be 1,000-yard rushers. They nearly were last year, but in this offense, the way it's going to be this year, I think only one will be, and it'll end up being Cam Petway, unless there's an injury and then Kerryon Johnson has to take over. Both are capable of 1,000-yard seasons. I just don't know if they're going to you know, both get the amount of carries for them to both hit 1,000 yards. You know, um, Daniel says if Auburn beats Clemson this year, it'll be a fun year. Yeah, I agree. If they beat Clemson early in the season, Auburn will be inching up close to a top-five spot. They'll probably be in the top eight at that point. And, uh, you know, they're they're definitely in, in uh, you know, within striking distance of the playoff early in the season, of course. But they got to keep winning. They got to keep winning, got to keep winning. But that that Clemson, a win at Clemson would give them some breathing room, so to speak. Um, 
they lose two games, I don't think they're getting into the playoff. Um, if they lose one, yes. It, it, but Auburn's schedule is really tough. I mean, it's really tough. Kevin uh, reacts, I like your 10 wins prediction, but I say if the defense is as good, it could get more wins. Uh, I don't know. Schedule's still pretty tough. I, I still see two losses at the very least for Auburn, but I'm, I'm being optimistic and saying Auburn gets 10 wins. What, in your opinion, are the top three priorities to being in the position for the Iron Bowl to determine the SEC West Championship, asked Marcus. The top three priorities. Um, great quarterback play. Very good defense. Um, and the running game hasn't, uh, you know, lost any steam. That's the three things. I don't think he could focus on the other team or, or you know, uh, you know, Alabama or whatever and what they're doing. But to me, those are the three things that Auburn has to have to contend for an SEC West championship. Great quarterback play. Running game doesn't take off from where it was last season, and the defense has to be very good. Notice I didn't say great defense. It just has to be very good. It needs to be top 25 this season. I think the offense will make up for some things, that the defense might fall back a little bit from where it was last season as a top seven, top eight scoring defense. I don't know if Auburn's going to be able to do that on defense again this year, especially with Montrevious Adams gone. I thought Montrevious Adams was tremendous uh, at tackle and really changed the complexion of the game. Chandler asked, what are, what's a potential trap game for Auburn? Uh, I'll say Mizzou, the first SEC game of the season, and it's on the road, first time Auburn's ever been to Columbia. And the reason why I say that is because Mizzou opens the season up with four straight home games, all right? And the fourth game is Auburn. They have winnable games, all those three before, including Purdue, which will help them get some confidence. Mizzou really stepped up, really stepped up um, late last season. They had that incredible win against Arkansas to really get them going into the into the offseason. They've got an incredible quarterback in Drew Locke. His receivers dropped a lot of passes last season. And if not for that, that offense has been even better, even after leading the SEC. Defense has to get better. It did late last season with Barry Odom, the head coach and the former defensive coordinator, taking over the defense once again and simplifying things. I think Mizzou's going to surprise people uh, in the SEC East. And listen, that's going to be a tough game early in the season for Auburn. That's the trap game in my eyes. Uh, Eric says Ole Miss is the trap game. I don't agree with that. I think Eric, uh, Eric, I think Ole Miss is going to be complete, complete, uh, and complete chaos by that time they come. Uh, to Auburn it's going to be it's going to be a tough game uh, for Ole Miss Ole Miss's defense is not going to be very good uh, Kevin asked do you think the secondary would be better with Greg Brown listen I thought the secondary is pretty good at times last season my question this year though is are the safeties and there's not a lot of depth there Rudy Ford's gone obviously Trey Matthews gonna have to step up and really lead all those guys I think the corners will be better because they get Jamel Dean a healthy Jamel Dean back out there and also uh, Carlton Davis is back. He didn't have a really great season, but he's able to really, uh, I think, step it up this year if he can. Um, uh, Javaris Davis, listen, a freshman, had to step into the fold. He's a year older. That really helps him. But the questions will be at safety. And I, I think you're going to see teams like Clemson and Missouri early in the season attack Auburn deep to try and take advantage of that, of those matchups. At least on paper, as you said, it stands right now. That, that, that looks like what they would probably end up doing. Charles asks, are the receivers up to the task? Well, what's that task exactly? I'm sure the task you're saying is, are they up to uh, you know, providing one of the top three passing offenses in the SEC? I don't know. Um, I need to see one receiver step up. I, we didn't even see that last season. Tony Stevens led, the S, or led Auburn in receiving yards, but it wasn't a great season. Auburn needs a guy that's challenging for 1,000 yards. And then a couple more behind him that are 400, 500 yard guys to, for me to say, that's a very good uh, receiving unit. Obviously Auburn's got a lot of talent right now at receiver question is, can I get one of those guys, two of those guys, three of those guys to step up and be the man um, in some tough situations. I think they're going to force them to do so because of Jared Sim being a quarterback and what he's going to be doing uh, at that position for them. So do they have what it takes? I think so. But we, we'll have to wait and see exact, exactly what they're able to produce. David says a road game to Arkansas a week after a trip to LSU is scary. I somewhat agree, though I do think uh, Arkansas 
I, I picked Arkansas finished last in the West this year. I don't think they're going to be very good. Uh, who's the number three corner this season? Like I said, I, I went through the names there, Javaris Davis, Carlton Davis, and then Jamel Dean. Dean might end up being the third guy. Uh, Colby asked, does John Fleck III have good hands? We haven't seen him catch the ball a lot. He's still developing. He's still developing as a route runner. He has he has some ways to go. Um, but he will play this season uh, at receiver. He will play some different spots for them to kind of get him more involved. Uh, so, yeah, he will play. I, I just don't know where he'll be in that pecking order of, uh, you know, receivers. Is he on top tier? I don't think he'll be top tier. One guy that, you know, honestly disappeared the last season was Jason Smith, and I think those two are comparable because of their speed and their backgrounds as former quarterbacks. But John Franklin III, I think, is faster. They'll utilize him on speed sweeps and other things. Uh, tight end play should also help the receiver courses, David. Yeah, I, I just don't – I mean, they're promising that the tight end will be more involved this season, but I'll believe it when I see it. And even so, if you go through the, through the history with Gus Malzahn – you know, C.J. Uzama was his last tight end that he utilized quite a bit, and it was really just in the red zone um, and and then some uneven packages. Um, and C.J. was a guy that was able to go up and get the ball for him. Obviously, he was the reason why they beat Mississippi State in 2013, the final couple of minutes. Um, but he was, it wasn't like he was a guy that was catching five five passes a game, you know. I don't know if Auburn's got that tight end on the roster this season either. Um, what's going to help the receiving core is Jared Stidham throwing the ball accurately, throwing it to their hands, um, throwing it to where they can catch it. Um, and I, I, I want to see how Jared Stidham's trust is with his players as well. Because once you start developing that, then you trust a certain receiver to when he goes deep just to throw it up to him. Or you know that so-and-so like Marquise McClain can catch a ball that's four feet outside of him as he's coming across the middle of the field. Or you know that if you throw it behind someone as you're getting blitzed and you have to throw it to the back foot, that they're more likely to get the ball than you than the other player. So um, that's things that are developed in the offseason. That's why the summer is so important with these captain practices that are voluntary because that's when you develop your timing. That's when you start developing – that's when you start figuring out um, the little things that receivers do and your quarterback does – that's when you get the chemistry. That's when you get things going. And uh, the summer is so important. I think I think the summer is more important than the spring, to be quite honest. And the summer is what we really don't get to talk about because we can't cover it. I mean, it's just voluntary workouts. And uh, that's going to be important. And we ha we'll we see it, I guess, in game one. But we'll start hearing about it behind closed doors when they have these scrimmages about how Jarek Stidham's, uh, you know, locking up with his receivers. Really, really should be interesting. Um, any other questions, guys? I really appreciate you stopping by. Um, we got 20 people live right now. It's pretty good for my page, my private page. I didn't want to put this on our Auburn Undercover page with our 200,000 subscribers or uh, 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 likes on there because I didn't want to have any uh, equipment errors. But obviously, I think this is working out pretty well. Can anybody comment? Let me know. Is, is the audio uh, very clear? Is the audio clear? That's what I need to know. Um, it sounds clear on my headset, but I'm plugged directly into the board here that I've got. I'm not plugged into the computer. So if anybody can comment, just let me know if the audio is coming in through clear. Let me know. Okay, great. Thanks, David. I appreciate it. Does it sound like studio quality, so to speak? It doesn't sound like I'm in an echo chamber. It room's kind of echoey still. I'm trying to figure it out. Great. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Cindy. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks. Really appreciate it. Let me, uh, can I scroll down? I can't scroll down. My computer is so limited right now <laughs> with this stream. Um, if, you had, if you just post a question, uh, go ahead and post it again if you can, uh, and I will answer it. I'm sorry. I couldn't scroll back up. No wind, LOL. Yeah, yeah. No wind. Yeah, this microphone here, obviously this isn't like a top-of-the-line, you know, like microphone you would get, you know, for podcasting or things like that, but – it's got multiple purposes, and it's going to utilize. We're going to utilize it a lot more in the field uh, this season, and also with our podcasts. Uh, we're recording a podcast tonight, Michael and I. He's uh, coming over here in a couple hours to record one, and so I've been testing some things out. Uh, bought a really fancy new uh, audio recorder to record interviews this season, but also to 
utilized for podcasts. So uh, hopefully it works out. I, I, you got to spend money to make things a little bit more better quality. And uh, I'm trying to do that this year. Kevin asks, how do you think the starting offensive line will look on game one? Guys, I always have problems going left or right for some reason on this, but I, I see it as Darius James, uh, Mike Horton, who everybody keeps saying maybe he's not going to be left guard. Mike Horton, uh, Austin Golson at center, Wilson Bell at right guard, and Braden Smith at right tackle. That's like the easy answer people will tell you uh, coming out of spring and heading into the summer. But I think that's what it'll end up being. I don't see Wilson Bell moving to the left side. I just don't see it happening. Dan wants to know what's the scouting report on Clemson right now. I, you know, I don't know. Coaches be able to answer that better than better than me. I mean, and like I'm watching tape of Clemson, but I think Clemson's going to take a little bit to uh, get going offensively. I think their defense can be very good early in the season, though. So that's something to watch. Who do I feel is going to be the number three running back? Uh, the person I think should be the number three running back is Malik Miller. Uh, will that be the case? Probably not. It'll probably end up being Cam Martin. Um, I am interested to see how Tim Horton, the running backs coach, works out uh, with uh, Devin Barrett, the freshman, coming in. I think in the end it'll be Cam Martin as a third guy. But I think Cam Martin's maybe – I mean, listen, Cam Martin's similar to Carryon Johnson and Malik Miller similar to Cameron Petway, though I don't think anybody on this team is comparable to Cameron Petway, but he's as close as they get. I really love Malik Miller. I love his, the way he runs. I especially lo love the way he runs in the red zone near the goal line. I think that's a guy they can utilize quite a bit. Cam – not, excuse me. Um, uh, yeah, Cam Martin is a guy that they can utilize um, for some speed speed stuff. I really like Malik Miller. All I want for once, says Glenn, is to make the hype a positive great year. Sorry, it just rolled off. I think he was talking about the hype and how people are always, you know, Auburn gets hyped up and then they don't meet those expectations and everything, and then that's an issue. I, You know, listen, um, my, my message to fans since uh, the spring has been, listen, just embrace the hype. Just embrace it. Um, in this day and age, listen, um, this is a truth bombs for you. You've got Alabama in the league, in the same state, obviously, and they've got the greatest coach in college football history. I think Nick Saban is the greatest coach so far in college football history, even better than Bear Bryant. What he's doing in this day and age to stay as consistent as they are and go to the national championship year after year and win it every now and again, or I say every now and again, but, I mean, listen, they've, they've won, like, a handful of titles since he's been there. Uh, it, it's incredible. And to go along and think, well, a disappointing season is if Auburn doesn't beat Alabama and doesn't win the SEC. I don't think you need to look at it that way. I think a successful season would be, like, 10 wins, uh, a, a very successful season. And I think that's kind of the – that's the ceiling, the roof you should be looking at right now. It's 10 wins. Anything above that's gravy. You should expect nine wins, though, as a fan. Which goes into this question Clint just asked. How many and what games does Gus Malzahn need to win? Listen, I don't think it's an amount of wins, but I do think nine wins will keep him safe. But I think he's got to be Georgia or Alabama. It's got to be one of those two. We'll see. Um, yeah. But I think beating Clemson on the road would be huge for him. I think beating LSU on the road would be huge for him. Um, and if you were to win those two games but then lose Georgia and Alabama, I think he's probably still safe. I mean, how do you how do you fire a coach that's won 10 games? You know what I mean? How do you do that? And I know some people say, hey, well, maybe Auburn can go out and get Chip Kelly. I don't think Chip Kelly would come to Auburn. Um I would don't definitely don't think he would go to Ole Miss. I think he's probably, if anything, he'd have his eyes on the Texas A&M job because of the facilities and the talent bed there. He would win a lot of games. Who do I think would be Ole Miss's next coach? Some up and comer, or it might end up being Matt Luke. If Matt Luke gives him a winning season, you know he wins like seven, eight games or something like that. He has a shot at keeping the job. I don't think they're going to get a big name. I mean, listen. Big schools don't even really get big names that much. This, this anyway, anyway, unless you're Michigan um, <clears throat> or Ohio State, and they don't have a lot of turnover year to year, obviously, with coaching talent. Um, you know, heck of a winning coach leaves, and then Urban Meyer's on the market. Michigan had a couple of hiccups, and then they get Jim Harbaugh, who was not happy in San Francisco. 
Marcus says with the talent in the roster, Gus Malzahn doesn't have an excuse to fall below eight or nine wins this year. I think that's I think a lot of fans would agree with you there, uh, Marcus. Brandon said, "Ask Brandon Hammer, not me." Asked, "What do you think that was the purpose of recruiting Sean White if he wasn't a good system fit?" Uh, you know, listen, Gus Malzahn hit on that a couple times, and his thing is they look for players that quarterbacks that uh, that have it. What is that it factor? Being able to scramble when they have to get open, buy some extra time, and have that I hate saying the word grit, but have that grit about them to survive in the pocket. Problem is, Sean White's able to do that in high school. In college, he's been getting hurt because of that. That's the that's the issue with him. I, th- I mean, listen, I don't think any quarterback quote unquote fits. I think the best quarterback for the system's dual threat, and they haven't had that the last couple of years. They thought John Franklin III was going to be that, didn't happen. And Jared Stenham is definitely not going to be a guy who's rushing for 500 yards this season. They're going to have to throw the ball. It's Auburn, says Glenn. If we can't beat Alabama and Georgia, we're not worthy. Dang. I mean, that that's high hopes. I think you got to beat Georgia. You can't let Georgia become the Alabama of the SEC East, and then Auburn's losing to both of them. You can't let that happen. you got to beat one of the two. I don't think you need to beat both. Is Kim still the backup center? If Austin gets hurt, is Kim ready to step up? I mean, for now he is, but it could end up being uh, um, Casey Dunn, uh, the transfer from Jacksonville State. He was an All-American and on the FCS level. Dan asks, what's the outlook on replacing Carl Lawson as a pass rusher? Will there be a guy there? That's a great question. I think the top, my top preseason pick there would be Jeff Holland. Um, outside that, some people could say, I mean, you can see T.D. Moultrie. I was supposed to write a story on him today. I'm thinking I'm going to say it for tomorrow or Thursday. But T.D. Mo- T.D. Moultrie, I mean, newcomer, but he's got an opportunity. The coaches really like him. And it's all about that buck position is what I'm really talking about. Ooh, Marcus asked, who do I see going the draft next year? Ah, oof. That's a tough question. I'll say this. I mean, people will go Jared Stidham, quarterback. I've been, we've been told that he wants to stay at Auburn a couple of years. So, and you see that more and more, Sam Darnold at USC. Uh, I think the quarterback at Montana, is that the guy? Uh, staying for their senior year, staying one more year. Uh, and I, I think he's got to do that because there's not a lot of film out there on Jared Stidham. That's if he has a great year this year. And there's that question of, does he go to the NFL? So we'll see. Okay. We had a pretty good time here as so I was testing out the equipment. I'm glad this worked out. I was very worried that it wouldn't really work out. Seems to have worked out well so far. My computer's about to catch fire, though, I think. (laughs) But it's working. That's good. It's always good. Brandon Hammer asks, was JF3 given a fair opportunity to win the job last season? I felt he was unfairly pulled. No, he was given a fair opportunity. I think he was given his fair share of opportunities. Uh, The guy that wasn't given really a great opportunity was Jeremy Johnson. Jeremy Johnson said at the Sugar Bowl after he had to come in and play for Sean White, that he was pl- playing for the scout team all season after, and this was really his first real action out there. He and, and I guess in his way, he's saying uh, he wasn't really ready for it. So that's too bad. John Franklin III was given plenty of opportunities. He just didn't, couldn't do it. Fumbling issues, not very accurate throwing the ball. Glenn Pope says, "I love your take on the Auburn Tigers. Thank you. Thanks, Glenn. I appreciate it. Just try to tell it like it is." Uh, Marcus wants to know, is Nick Coe still making a lot of noise? Nick Coe's a guy to watch out for this year, definitely. Keep an eye on him. Do I think it'll be three times a charm for Daniel Carlson? Uh, We'll see. Like he said, he hopes that he's kicking more extra points than uh, field goals, though. (laughs) And I, I think Auburn fans would agree with that. Thanks, Glenn. I appreciate it. Have I watched season two of Last Chance U? It's a good watch. I have not, and to be honest, the only reason why I watched last season's uh, first season was because of uh, John Franklin the Third being on it. So, is my stream pausing up, guys? Let me know. It's probably time for me to stop it anyway. Like I said, my computer is about is about to explode. Uh, 
Uh, Parker asks who has potential to be breakout player. Uh, it'll be one of the receivers, and I'll go with Nate Craig Myers as of right now. Glenn says, no, the audio is fine. It's probably just my computer. Uh, thanks, Cindy. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you for chiming in. Uh, Adam says everything's good to go. Okay, well, that's good. So, 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 something, something's up with my computer. I don't think this computer's meant to be have all this equipment attached to it and streaming, but at least it's working. Marcus says, audio and video perfect. Please do this more often. Thank you. Uh, thanks. All right, well, we're going to try. We're definitely going to try. Uh, hope to do this more. Do, 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 do. Thanks, Parker. Appreciate you. Thank you. You guys go to AuburnUndercover.com, by the way. Uh, subscribe or check out our free content. We have plenty of free content. Or go to Auburn.247sports.com. Same thing, same URL. Um, and it'll get you there. Get you everything you need to know. Uh, and this will be my last question I answer, and then I'm going to sign off here. i got some things to do uh, before we get uh, we record the podcast here later tonight. We might, Hey, we might jump on later and do a video podcast. I don't know. Marcus says you and Keith should do a stream together since you two dominate the AU coverage. Keith's the best at covering recruiting, I'll tell you that. If he started talking recruiting to me, my, my eyes would glaze over. It would be over my head. <laughs> um, why do you think we run so much shotgun, asked Brandon, near the goal line? Yeah, I agree with you. I hate people who hate, not hate. I just don't understand running shotgun in the goal line. Stack them up, man. Run the darn ball. Auburn's good at running the ball. Why run? Why not run it in the goal line set? Why Why are you running it out of shotgun? Colby says, so glad Georgia Southern's going to be a night game. Yeah, man, it's going to be hot. Um, at least it'll cool down a little bit. I mean, it, whew, man, that uh, Mercer game week three, though, that's going to be hot. It's three in the afternoon. Whew, man. Maybe we'll luck out and get like some cloud cover for that game, and it'll be a little bit cooler. But man, uh, that could be a very hot, hot game. Yep, prime time is a good way to start the season. I agree, Glenn. Um, it's a good time too. It's not too late. Sun's down, starting to cool off. It'll cool off throughout the game. It's a good thing. Good thing. Good thing. Okay, everybody, thanks for joining me. I really appreciate that. I really, really do. Uh, we're, I was just testing out this new equipment, trying to see if it'll work, uh, the new broadcast stuff I've got on my computer and the soundboard, and it looks like we're good to go, so that's great. Um, we got some more equipment we're going to be testing out, not here live, but uh, for the podcast that Mike and I will be recording uh, here uh, later tonight. And uh, make sure and check that out. Tomorrow it'll be, it'll be up on auburnundercover.com. And we'll be doing more videos like this here in the studio, which is just my home office. Um, but uh, it works. I'm glad it works. This is great. This is so awesome. So thank you, guys. Thanks, Glenn. Um, thanks, Kevin. Appreciate it. We might come back on. Uh, the problem is we need two mics, and my soundboard can only do one with the computer. But I have a fix for that, that... Uh, but I don't have a cable for it yet. Um, I thought it was coming with the cable. It didn't come with the cable today, and I don't seem to have that type of cable around. But maybe I'll text Michael and see if he has a cable, and maybe we can do that, Kevin, and we can just come back on here for a few minutes and just say hello. Um, maybe we can do that. But it's going to be so late, and I'll let people be up. But, hey, listen, I'm a night owl. Maybe we'll do it. Anyway, thanks, guys. Marcus, you're lucky. You're in Hawaii. You Man, one day I'll go to Hawaii. One day, the beach is my haven, man. Every summer, wife and I, we go to the beach in the, on the Gulf, and, like, we travel far. And I just sit on the beach for hours under an umbrella because I am so fair-skinned I'll get burned. And even when I get burned, I turn back to this. I turn back to white, just, just see-through. I'm almost transparent. But I just love sitting there on the beach reading a book. That's all I want to do. Uh, I would do that for the next two weeks if I could. But, hey, I'm more excited that football's here. So it's going to be great. Full coverage at AuburnUndercover.com. It's going to be so much fun. So, anyway, recording a podcast here in a little bit. Go on Twitter. If you have any other questions, message me, and we'll answer them on the podcast. And maybe we'll jump back on here for a video uh, tonight. But, listen, um, we're going to be doing these much more often here in the studio. 
on Facebook Live, not only on this page, but more or less on the Auburn Undercover page here on Facebook. So make sure you go uh, like that page if you haven't already, Auburn Undercover. Uh, search for that on Facebook or Auburn Tigers on 24-7 Sports. F- search for that on Facebook, like it, and uh, make sure you sign up for notifications for videos and you will be all set up there. So thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. Thanks once again. AuburnUndercover.com. Follow me on Twitter at BMarcello. Thank you, and until next time, I'll see you down the road.